Portugal. So the link, all these announcements that I'm making, uh, they are already in our church uh, bulletin on the church website. The church bulletin is normally sent out latest Friday night, sometimes early Friday evening. And the link to the website is www.oxfordadventistchurch.org. So if you just go on Google and search Oxford Adventist Church, you'll be directed to this link. We normally just highlight a few of the announcements. We may not give all the details, so if you need to remind yourself or you want to go and check more details like venue, loca um, dates and times and so on and so forth, please go to the church website and you'll have all that information. There's also a few more uh, events that are taking place and being hosted or being led by um, the South England Conference. These are also in the church, uh, on the church website. And then um, last but not least, I want to just read through um, something. This is a request from the Pathfinder and Adventurer Club. There is a request to us as church members. So on top of um, carving out time to go and attend the campery, um, there is a fee that the children who are going as well as the accompanying adults have to pay. Um, as a club, they have brought a request to us as a church to support them in donation of food items, particularly dry food items. And I'll just quickly read through. However, we are not limiting to just food. If you're not able to probably go to the supermarket, but you have money that you can donate, please feel free to uh, channel those through uh, Brother Philip. If you don't know Brother Philip, Brother Philip, yeah, he's wearing um, his direct Pathfinder director's uniform. So this is the list. Um, so porridge, oats, um, milk. I'm not sure what whether this is, whether there's any preference here, but particularly long life milk, um, cereal for breakfast, baked beans, um, eggs, normal beans, rice, and sausage rolls or um, burger breads, uh, cabbages, uh, salad cream, juice, spaghetti. I'm just reading the, um, the dry goods. Um, soya chunks, um, cooking oil, uh, lentils, and um, sugar. So if you have anything else that you may want to donate, if I've not read just consult with Brother Philip. If you're not able to get um, the dry goods themselves, but you're able to want to send some money, whatever little or much that you have, um, please feel free to uh, donate that, and um, Brother Philip will be on hand to receive that. We thank you in advance. Thank you for um, listening. And um, I'd like to invite the present worship team to take the floor as we prepare for divine service. May God bless you all. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. God is good and all the time. Um, let's turn our hymnals to um, SDA Hymn 8. Um, hymn 8. Together to hearts the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing. Now cease from distress and sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. 
So from the beginning the fight we were winning, the Lord was at our side, all glory be thine. We all do extol thee, thou leader triumphant, and pray that I still a defender will be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation, thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. We'll continue with him for. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Him fall. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed hildreys sought forgiven, who like this praise to sing. Praise him, praise him, alleluia, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise him still the same forever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Praise him, praise him, alleluia, glorious in his faithfulness. Tenderly shields and spurs us, well our feeble friend he knows. In his hands he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Praise him, praise him, alleluia, while yet his mercy is Angels help us to adore him, he behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him, dwell us all in time and space. Praise him, praise him, alleluia, praise with us the Do in five zero six. Five zero six. Okay. Um we sing four nine five as a platform party joins us for service. Please rise. Can you rise?
We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, once again, it's good to see you all. And um, we thank God for his mercies that we are here. We can make it here to join together in worship and prayer. Um, i just like to invite us all to um, enjoy being the presence of God. And um, I'll just introduce the platform party, those who are here with me, and then I'll invite Sister Bui for a um, special welcome to all of us. Um, on my far right, we have Brother Emmanuel Shauri. <coughs> he will be leading us in tithes and offering this morning. And then next to Emmanuel is our PM um, Ministry Director, um, Sister Bui. She will be making uh, the announcements as well as taking the PM spot for a special promotion. And then the one who uh, will be bringing us the children's story, and uh, she's not at the pulpit, she'll just come at her own. When it's a children's story time is Sister Esther. And um, today we're blessed, we're going to hear and uh, receive the message of the meditational song from our own Oxford Junior Choir in their beautiful uniform. So at the, that particular time, you'll hear um, the song. And then I will be taking the main prayer. <coughs> Last but not least, um, the one who um, is going to bring the message of the Lord to us today is Sister Jody Bloom. So you will hear her voice when it's time for, for the sermon. I just like to request each and every one of us as much as possible, if you can please switch off your phone or put it on uh, fly mode so that it's not disrupting. That would be great. If you must use your Bible on it, please um, take consideration of those sitting around you. Thank you. A very happy Sabbath, church. Uh, thank you so much. That was much better. Let's try again. A very happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Ooh, thank you so much. Um, it's indeed a blessed and a happy Sabbath. Uh, we thank God for the opportunity to come into his sanctuary and worship with one another. Today is personal ministries. Uh, Emphasis Day. It is PM Emphasis Day. And the theme for today is uh, World Impact Day for the distribution of missionary books. It's World Impact Day. Please underline impact. It's World Impact Day for the distribution of missionary books. This uh, day, this theme, this focus was set or has been set by the General um, Conference. And the theme for this year is Inspired for Mission. Inspired for Mission is our theme for the entire year. And all personal ministries departments under the South England Conference's focus this year is to inspire and motivate each church member to be involved in mission. And here in Oxford Church, we don't want to end there. We have created and will continue to create opportunities for the inspired and motivated church members to partake in mission activities. 
And one of those mission activities is outreach, doing literature distribution. You know, I must say, um, as Christians, or let me just talk about myself, uh, this, was, this was me probably a year ago. We tend to focus on asking ourselves this question, what is my purpose? What is my purpose in this life? Why am I still here? What am I doing? What am I supposed to be doing? And then we take those questions to Jesus and ask him, Lord, what is my purpose? What is my calling, Lord? Can you just reveal my calling to me, Father God? We go down on our knees on a daily basis asking God to reveal our purpose, our calling. And church, allow me to say sometimes I feel like God is quiet uh, to those kind of prayers. You know, sometimes he seems to be quiet. It seems like he doesn't want to reveal the purpose that he has for us or our calling. And I have concluded that probably the reason why God seems to be quiet, underline the, the, the word seems, the reason why he seems to be quiet is because he's already revealed our purpose and calling as Christians. And our purpose and calling as Christians is simply this. We are a people who are tremendously loved by God. And we are called to tremendously love God. And we are called to share the love of God with a world that doesn't know of it yet. That is our calling as Christians. It's simply that. It is the core of our faith calling is to share the love of God with others. And one way to share the love of God with others is simply this, to go out and hand a book to someone else. A book that has a message of hope to someone else, to someone who is in desperate need of some hope in this world. A book that will help someone establish a relationship with God. A book that will introduce Jesus to someone else. Or a book that will help someone else strengthen, deepen their relationship with God. You know, the, the songwriter says, if I cannot preach like Paul, I can simply say, or I can tell the love of Jesus. I can tell someone that Jesus has died for you. And I'm sure, and I do acknowledge the fact that not all of us can preach like Paul. Certainly not myself, I cannot preach like Paul. But I'd want to believe that I do have the ability to stand and hand out a book to someone else. Brethren, what God is asking for is a willing heart. That's all he's asking for. A willing heart to be his mouthpiece, to be his hands, and to be his feet. And once you have opened up your heart to say, Jesus, here I am, guess what? He does the rest. All he's asking for from you and me this afternoon is just show up at the Corn Market Street. Just show up. That's all he's asking for. And once you have shown up, he will do the rest. The work is his. We are privileged to partner with him as he draws his own people to himself. What a privilege and an honor. So we invite you, church, to please come with us this afternoon, 2.30 p.m., at the Corn Market Street. We are cordially inviting prayer warriors. We are inviting singers. We are inviting praise and worship leaders. We are inviting any and everybody to come with us. We are going by the Holy Spirit and the guidance and grace of God. We are going to be singing. We are going to be praying. 
and we are going to be sharing the gospel of God with a world that desperately need, needs it. The love of God is what we are going to be sharing this afternoon. The love that God, you know, I've, I've, I've seen, I, was, I, had, I have the blessing of being born and raised in a Christian home. And I know the love of Jesus. I have experienced it myself. And sometimes I feel a little bit like I'm being selfish by not going out and sharing that love with someone else. I know we all have our own personal ministries. We do engage in personal ministries activities as individuals. We recognize that, we see that, and we do appreciate it. But sometimes we just need all of us to come and partake or take part in corporate mission activities. And that corporate mission activities is what will be happening this afternoon. Church outreach. So we need the church to be out in the street. My elder said this morning or a few minutes ago that it's a beautiful day and we thank God for the beautiful day. And I guess, and I, and I want to believe that God gave us this beautiful sun and warmth simply for us to be able to go out and witness for him. So please come with us. Yeah, please do come with us. I'm just going to end with this uh, verse, Acts 4 verse 31. And uh, once I conclude this verse, verse, we are going to get into a season of prayer just for the next four minutes. And I'm going to ask my elder. I thought Elder Yan would be here. I can't see him. Um, I was going to ask Elder Yan to pray for us. Um, I cannot see Elder Yan. But in the presence of Elder Yan, I am going to ask Mrs. Elder Yan to please pray for us. Um, it's Acts chapter 4, verse 31. It says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. We're going to claim this verse this afternoon. We're going to pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to go before us. Ask for the Holy Spirit to empower us to speak the word of God with nothing else but boldness given by the Holy Spirit. Mrs. Eldayan, please pray for us. Amen, Elder. Please pray for us. We are claiming uh, Acts 4, verse 31. I'll just read it again, Elder, in your hearing. Yes. It says, And okay. when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. We are asking God to pour down his Holy Spirit, empower us for us to be able to speak his word with boldness this afternoon. Thank you, Elder. A happy Sabbath and see you at 230 Corn Market Street. Thank you. Can we, for the prayer, can we all rise up as uh, we pray and ask the Spirit of God to be present and to empower us? Our Heavenly Father, God Almighty, we come before you this morning. We thank you for giving us life. We thank you for waking us up. It is not as ordinary that uh, we can come and you made a way for us to be here. And uh, you are life. Through your son you gave life and the life is with us. And uh, we pray as you gave us this life that through us the life can continue. So as the apostles prayed and they prayed in unity in one spirit, that you embolden them to go out and uh, give your word to others. And so we pray this morning that the same power, the spirit is the same, was in the past, is now, and it will be. So the same spirit can empower us to go out and uh, distribute, to speak to those who are in the needs that you may send your messengers to the field and to uh, 
to, to, to gather uh, for the harvest. And uh, we pray also for those who you have already prepared, who will receive, whether it's a book uh, that talks about you, whether it's a word uh, that uh, uh, some of us may speak to the others, that you may, it is uh, the seed that is planted, but it is your seed and it is up to you to let it grow so we pray that you prepare the hearts of those who will receive and uh, you will work them it is you who works in them for your kingdom so again we pray that you empower uh, all that will do your work and then those who will receive we all Give this into your hands. Pray for your leadership. We thank you and praise you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Um, I'd like to request the praise and worship team to come and lead us in uh, praise and worship, and then we'll go to the opening hymn. Yes, and um, I'd just like to request the following to stay behind for just 10 minutes. I'd like to have a word with you. So, um, Nicole and uh, Oliver Hudson, uh, Mutsa, and uh, Langa, please. Just 10 minutes after Divine, let's meet at the back there. Thank you. I can see your worried faces. It's, <laughs> it's nothing bad. Yeah, just a slight consultation with you guys. Thank you. Um, let's sing our hymn now through 506 for our praise and worship song. 506. <laughs> is our God, a bulwark never failing, our helper he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing, for still our ancient fall, God seek to work us Scraps and power great, and I'm with cruel hate. On earth is not easy. Did we in our own strength confide? Our striving will be losing. When all the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing, that as good that may be, Christ Jesus it is he, Lord of all his name, from age to age the same. Win the battle, and though this world and devil fail, should threaten to undo us, we will not fear for God at will, He's true to triumph through us. The Prince of Darkness came, we tremble not for him, his rage we can endure, for lo his doom is sure, one little word shall fail him. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abide there. The spirit and the guitars through him who with us side. Let goods and kindred go. 
this mortal life also, the body they may kill, lost through the bided seal, his kingdom is forever. Let's rise and sing as the H371 for our opening hymn. 371. scripture reading which comes to us from the book of Isaiah chapter 37 um, from verse 14 to 20 and it reads and Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messengers and read it and Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord and Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord saying O Lord of hosts God of Israel that dwellest between the cherubims Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. 
Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. May God bless the reading. Um, we're going to have a word of prayer. Those who are able to kneel, please kneel. If you're not able to, just take a position on your seat. Our kind and loving Father, what in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that you've blessed us, you've called us your sons and your daughters, and that, Lord, you've told us to come to you with our petitions, to bring our burdens at the foot of your throne, Lord. And so we do exactly that this morning. We come with humility, Lord, and thanksgiving. We're grateful that you've brought us through yet another week, and we're meeting here this Sabbath morning, Lord, to worship you and to seek rest, Lord, in your presence. I pray, Father God, that you may lift these burdens from our hearts and fill our hearts with peace, fill our hearts with joy. And Lord God, I pray that even as we wait upon you with the various requests that we may have, Lord, that we may do so by faith and not give up, Lord. I want to ask, Lord God, that each and every soul that is in this room this morning, that you may bless them. And Lord, meet them at their points of need. You know us, Lord, from our mother's wombs, before even we were formed. You knew us already. You know the count of hair on our heads, Lord God. And so we ask that, Lord, those needs that we have in our hearts, that which keeps us awake at night, Lord, I pray, Father God, that you meet us at these, ver these various and specific needs. I pray for that person who is unwell, for that person who is struggling with their bills, for that person who is looking for a job. I pray, Lord God, for all the children who are going back to school from next week. I pray even for our young adults, Lord, who are in college, who are looking for their first jobs, those who are through their studies, Lord God, or in the middle of their studies. I pray that you bless each and every one of them, Lord God, Jehovah. You've told us in the words that we've just read that there's no other God, there's only you, Lord. I pray that you turn our minds to be focused on you, Lord God. If there be distractions in our lives, that, Lord, you help us to identify these and take them away, Lord. I pray, Lord God, in a very specific way for the program that we have this afternoon of literature distribution, that, Lord, even as we work as man, may the Spirit direct our actions, and may the Spirit, Lord God, um, water the seeds that will be um, planted this afternoon, and may your word go far and wide. I pray, Lord, for Sister Jody, as she is going to speak your words to us this morning. Bless her, Lord. Speak through her. Give her the confidence and the clarity of mind, Lord God, Jehovah, and let us who hear this word be open and accepting to it, and let it transform our lives, Lord Jehovah. We pray, Lord God, these things, asking and believing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath Church. Uh, now is the time for the tithe and offerings, so can the deacons and deaconesses please get out the offerings.
congregation please rise? Heavenly Father, as we come to today, Lord, I want to say thank you for bringing us all here, Lord, so we can worship you today, Lord. And I pray that all these tithes and offerings that the congregation has given today that goes to people who need it, Lord, and goes to the good cause towards you, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Emmanuel. Um, at this time, we're going to have our children's story. I'd like to invite sister esther and uh, children please may you come forward and while they do that i just like to request that we please observe reverence in the house of the lord there's quite a bit of chatter in the church today i'm not sure why so please let's keep it low um if you must speak please Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. Yes, you can do better. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. Brilliant. Who is happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes, it's always nice, okay? When it's Friday, you're like, yes, the Sabbath is here to rest. Okay, I always look forward to it. And I believe you as well look forward to it. So, today... Uh, it's personal ministries emphasis Sabbath, you know. You know, when our sister Bui was talking, he said that everyone has a personal ministry. Do you know that? Do you know your ministries? Who knows their ministry? Yes, Elijah. Music. Music. Mm, amazing. Anyone else knows their ministry? Yes, Clifton. Writing. Writing is your ministry. Yes, you can write beautiful letters, encouraging messages, you know. God has blessed each and every one of us with a gift, and we can always use it to tell someone about Jesus. That's why we are here. We are here for mission, to spread the word of God. So today's story is about making friends. I'll read the story, and then we'll see what we get from there. So, 10-year-old Jane was talking with friends after school one day. When she saw a little girl walking past, something wasn't right. The girl was wearing a blue skirt, but the blue skirt wasn't hanging down properly. Has that ever happened to you girls? You walk around and your skirt is up, but your friends just laugh. Hmm? So part of the skirt was sticking up. Jane called out, hey girl, but the girl didn't hear and kept on walking. Jane ran up behind the girl and pulled down the rumpled part of the skirt. The girl was surprised. She didn't know what was happening, but then she realized that Jane had helped her by straightening out her skirt. Thank you, she said. A few days later, Jane saw the little girl again after school. This time she was standing with her mother. The girl turned to her mother and said, that's the girl. Then she looked at Jane and said, hey, come meet my mother. Jane went over. Lydia told me that she had met a nice girl at school, Lydia's mother said. She said that I should meet you. It's nice to meet you. Jane also thought it was nice to meet Lydia's, uh, Lydia and her mother. She smiled shyly. As she turned to go home, Lydia's mother gave her a big hug. Then she gave her an oatmeal cookie. Jane liked the cookie and the hug. 
After that, Jane ran, ran into Lydia's mother every time she saw her. Lydia's mother always hugged her and asked, how is your day going? Jane became friends with Lydia and her mother. After a while, Lydia's mother asked, who do you live with? I live with my grandmother, Jane said. Lydia's mother invited Jane and her grandmother to come over for a visit, but grandmother couldn't find a time that suited her. Before Jane knew, the school year ended, and she didn't go to the same school anymore. So she didn't see Lydia and her mother anymore. She couldn't call them because she didn't know their telephone number. Grandmother sent Jane to spend the summer with her mother in another city. Jane missed grandmother and he spoke by telephone every day. One day grandmother said to Lydia, uh, said to Jane that Lydia's mother had come over to visit. So Lydia's mother began visiting grandma nearly every day. She's a good woman, grandmother said. After school started, Lydia's mother invited Jane and grandmother to a delicious meal. Afterward, she invited them to come again. Don't only come for one special meal, she said, but come every Sabbath. So Jane and grandma started going to Lydia's home every Sabbath. Jane learned that Lydia and her family were Seventh-day Adventists, and they worshipped every Sabbath in their home. Lydia's parents had moved to the city to teach people about Jesus, and they hoped to open an Adventist church. So Jane and grandmother were the first visitors to their home church. Then grandmother got sick and couldn't go to Lydia's house church anymore. So Jane went by herself. As she went, she began to read the Bible every day. She began to pray every day, and she noticed that God had her prayers. Once, she really, really wanted a dress, and she prayed and prayed for it. Then she got the dress. Today, Jane is 16 years old, and she goes to the house church every Sabbath. The house church has grown to include other boys and girls. It even has its own Pathfinder club with 10 children. Jen loves being a pathfinder. She loves worshiping God on Sabbath, and she loves Lydia and her family. She wants to give her heart to Jesus in baptism. Amen? So did you hear how this friendship started? How did it start? Yes, Miranda. It started with Jane helping Lydia with her skirt. It started with a small kind act, all right? Reaching out for Jesus, sometimes we think, oh, as Auntie was saying, maybe you need to be a very powerful preacher. No, sometimes it starts with very small acts of kindness, sharing a toy, inviting your neighbor for a meal, playing together on, you know, in the playground. In there, you start making friends. You know, so Jane and Lydia became friends just because of one encounter. And they started sharing. Was that sharing Jesus right away? No. You know, each time they met, sharing a hug. How are you? Can you visit me? Can I visit you? You know, knowing each other. And the more they knew each other, the more they felt confident to invite um, Jane and grandmother to their house church. Do you know that you can do that as well? At your school, you're an ambassador for Christ. Be kind, all right? Share the little you have with others. Okay, spend time with those, um, your friends. And before you know it, you'll become good friends that maybe you'll be able to invite them to maybe at your house first, maybe for a prayer or just for a meal, you know? And as that friendship grows, you'll feel confident maybe to invite them to church. You know, and before you know it, maybe they'll give their lives to Christ Jesus. You know, ours is to share Jesus, all right? And then Jesus' mission is to convert those people to Himself. Ours is to share, all right? So I hope that you'll be able to share something with your friends. Maybe a prayer, maybe singing. You know, sometimes when I sing in the corridor at work, or someone, oh, it's lovely to hear someone singing. But you know, you do it unconsciously and someone notices and they feel that it's a nice thing, you know. So everywhere you are, you can share Jesus. Amen. And this afternoon, your heart, 
there is book distribution. Do you think you're too young to give a book? Anyone too young to give a book? I don't think so. We can go and support as well because there's so many ways we can share Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. So who wants to pray for us? Yes, Clifton, come. Come here and pray, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that we can worship everything that you told us to worship. And I pray that we can always listen to anyone that we supposed to worship. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you, Clifton. All right, you can go back to your seats. Remember to share Jesus. Thank you, Sister Esther, for the children's story. And thank you, children, for your great participation. We're going to hear a message through um, the junior choir as we have our meditational song. So junior choir, please, it's your time. After that, um, Sister Jody will um, come to give us the word of um, God for this afternoon. Thank you.
Good morning, church, and a happy Sabbath. It's a blessing to be here today. My sermon is entitled, What Have They Seen in Your House? Before we begin, shall we just bow our heads for a word of prayer? Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power that is in it, and we pray that you will speak to our hearts and minds as we study it today. And Lord, I pray that you'll give us a fresh revelation of who you are. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so before we dive into the message this morning, does everyone have access to one of these? Everyone's got a Bible? Yep, amen. Um, so this morning we're going to delve into the life of one of my favourite characters in the Bible. Um, it's hard to choose one favourite, uh, but I'd say he's definitely in the top five. So today we'll be looking at Hezekiah. We'll examine three aspects of his life. His fire for God, his faith, and his focus. But before we look at Hezekiah, I want us to look at another man. So turn to, with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 28. 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 1. And it says, Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord, as his father David had done. Does anyone know who Ahaz was? Anyone know? Okay, so he was Hezekiah's father. And according to the text, was he a, a good king, a bad king? You can talk to me, church. Yeah, he, he, he was pretty bad. Um, if you carry on reading, you see that he instigated the worship of other gods. He burnt some of his children in the fire and he sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places. Now let's jump down to verse 19. It says, For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel, for he had encouraged moral decline in Judah and had been continually unfaithful to the Lord. So Ahaz's decisions as the king of Judah impacts the whole nation. The king is unfaithful and the people follow. And unfortunately, we see this pattern time and time again in the Bible. 
the leaders and the nation turn from God and eventually God's protection is withdrawn and their enemies start invading. And this is no exception. Ahaz's reign was not a particularly peaceful one. While he was king, Judah was attacked and defeated numerous times by the Edomites, the Philistines, and even the northern kingdom of Israel. And by the time we get to verse 22, they've now also been attacked by the Syrians. Let's read verses 22 and 23. It says, Now in the time of his distress, King Ahaz became increasingly unfaithful to the Lord. This is that King Ahaz. For he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus, which had defeated him, saying, Because the gods of the kings of Syria help them, I will sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. Ahaz is on this downward spiral. Eventually, he collects the articles from the temple and cuts them in pieces. Then he shuts up the temple doors. All the sacrifices, the work of the high priest, it stops. And instead, high places are set up in every city of Judah. So this is the situation when Hezekiah comes to power. The temple's closed and there's wide-scale apostasy throughout the land. And the instigator of all this was his own father. And I think that's really interesting, because let's be honest, children are a bit like sponges. They often copy what you do. Now, I personally don't have any children, but I do have a nephew. And it's been really interesting seeing how he's grown and developed um, and there are times that he'll, he'll say something, he'll say words and even the way he says it, his intonation. And I think that's exactly like my sister. And it makes me realize that many of us are influenced more than we realize by how we were brought up or the society we were raised in. Yet what does the Bible say about Hezekiah? 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 1 and 2. It says, Hezekiah became king when he was 25 years old, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. So Hezekiah grew up surrounded by idolatry and the worship of other gods. But he made a choice. He chose to go against his father's example and to do what was right in God's sight. And it's a reminder that even if we don't grow up with great role models in our lives, it doesn't have to dictate our future or define us. We have the opportunity to choose differently, to choose a path that is right in God's sight. Let's continue, verse three. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he, Hezekiah, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Then he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them in the east square and said to them, hear me Levites, now sanctify yourselves, sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry out the rubbish from the holy place. Ahaz, had closed the doors of the temple, but now his son reopens them. He instructs the priests to sanctify themselves and the house of the Lord. But did anyone notice when this takes place? <laughs> In the first year, not only that, the first year, the first month of his reign. So from the moment Hezekiah is crowned king, he brings change. There's no hesitation, no delay. He immediately gives his instructions. You see, this isn't a king who is controlled by his counselors or who's concerned about winning popular approval. This is a king who is on fire for God. So the temple is sanctified, but Hezekiah isn't finished because now the sacrifices can resume and he wastes no time. 
Rising up early, Hezekiah gathers the rulers of the city and they go to the house of the Lord. Verse 21 says that they offer a sin offering for the kingdom, for the sanctuary and for Judah. But that's not all. Let's jump to verse 27. Then Hezekiah commanded them to offer the burnt offering on the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord also began with the trumpets and with the instruments of David, king of Israel. So all the assembly worshipped, the, the singers sang and the trumpeters sounded. All this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had finished offering, the king and all who were present with him bowed and worshipped. The whole nation is repenting. They're turning away from their false worship and they're seeking after God. Just picture it, thousands of people standing in front of the temple, singing, praising God and bowing before him. But Hezekiah is still not finished. Turn with me to chapter 30. Chapter 30, 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verses 1 to 5. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel. For the king and his leaders and all the assembly in Jerusalem had agreed to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at the regular time because a sufficient number of priests had not consecrated themselves, nor had the people gathered together at Jerusalem. And the matter pleased the king and all the assembly. So they resolved to make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, since they had not done it for a long time in the prescribed manner. The people hadn't kept Passover for a long time, but Hezekiah is eager for it to be celebrated as quickly as possible. So he writes invitations. But according to verse 1, who does he write these invitations to? Ephraim to is, it says, yeah, exactly, to Israel and Judah and Ephraim and Manasseh. Here's the thing. The nation of Israel had a different king. Hezekiah was king of Judah. He wasn't in charge of Israel. And remember, Israel had actually invaded Judah during Ahaz's reign, so the two nations weren't even on the best terms. But Hezekiah's fire to see people return to God isn't limited to his own kingdom. He has a burden on his heart for Israel too. Now, many people from Israel reject his invitation, but a few humble themselves and join. And by the time the Passover begins, a large assembly is gathered at Jerusalem. Verse 21. So the children of Israel, who were present at Jerusalem, kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing to the Lord, accompanied by loud instruments. And Hezekiah gave encouragement to all the Levites who taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they ate throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. Then the whole assembly agreed to keep the feast another seven days, and they kept it another seven days with gladness. It makes me laugh. You know, they'd kept the Passover for a week, but they were so blessed that they didn't want to stop, so they kept it for another week. And notice the wording. It says they kept it with gladness. This wasn't just a routine for them. This was real, sincere repentance. Hezekiah's fire for God leads the nation to be on fire for him as well. You see, the influence of one person is powerful. And yes, Hezekiah was a king, so his sphere of influence was naturally going to be great. But don't think that just because you're not royalty, you can't make an impact too. The book Steps to Christ has this powerful quote. It says, 
The humblest and poorest of the disciples of Jesus can be a blessing to others. They may not realize that they are doing any special good, but by their unconscious influence, they may start waves of blessing that will widen and deepen, and the blessed results they may never know until the day of final reward. They do not feel or know they are doing anything great. They are not required to weary themselves with anxiety about success. They have only to go forward quietly, doing faithfully the work that God's providence assigns, and their life will not be in vain. When you're connected to the God of heaven, it doesn't matter if you're a king or an accountant. You can have a powerful influence on those around you. Often we don't realize how much of a blessing even the smallest acts of kindness or words of encouragement and faith can have on people's lives. And I think the key to Hezekiah's success is found in chapter 31, verses 21. It says, And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandment, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. So he prospered. In everything Hezekiah did, he sought the Lord. True success doesn't come from our own ingenuity or from how charismatic or eloquent we may be. True success comes from seeking God. He says, if you seek me, you will find me if you what? If you seek me with all your heart. As soon as Hezekiah comes to the throne, he reforms the kingdom. But then we get to the next chapter. And we learn that the Assyrian king, Sennacherib, is planning to invade Jerusalem. And we won't go into the whole story, but I just want us to focus on Hezekiah's reaction to this crisis. So turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 32. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 1 to 8. After these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that his purpose was to make war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city, and they helped him. Thus many people gathered together who stopped all the springs and the brook that ran through the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And he strengthened himself, built up all the wall that was broken, raised it up to the towers and built another wall outside. As he repaired, also he repaired the millow in the city of David and made weapons and shields in abundance. Then he set military captains over the people gathered them together to him in the open square of the city gate and gave them encouragement, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him. For there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. When Hezekiah hears that Sennacherib is about to invade Jerusalem, he makes preparations. He diverts the water, he repairs the walls, he creates armour and weapons. There's another account in 2 Kings which also mentions the tunnel he built to divert water into the city. And that tunnel is still there to this day. I remember me and my brother were walking through it a few years ago, and you can feel the chisel marks on the walls where they've cut out into the rock. And I remember thinking how much effort would have gone into building this. They didn't have the machines and tools that we have today. It would have been difficult and costly work. But we learn from this that Hezekiah is a man of action. When he hears of the danger, he fortifies the city, he prepares for an attack. Yet, as practical as he was in the time of crisis, 
He didn't, strength, he didn't trust in his strength alone to protect him. When the king encourages the people, what does he say? Verse 7, there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Hezekiah has faith in God. And his words remind me of two other accounts in the Bible. The king tells the people to be strong and courageous. The same words Joshua uses as he speaks to the children of Israel when they're on the brink of the promised land. The king also states that there are more with us than with him. And I remember Elisha, when the Syrians were surrounding the city and his servant cries out, what are we going to do? Elisha responds, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And as Elisha prays, the servant's eyes are opened and he sees the army of the Lord encamped around the city. And now Hezekiah utters the same words. He sees the unseen. He knows God is on their side and he will fight the battle for them. And I wonder if these accounts are actually filling Hezekiah's mind as he encourages the people. Maybe he's remembering what God has done in the past. You know, sometimes we forget that these aren't just stories. They're accounts of how God has intervened throughout history. And as Paul says, they were written for our admonition, for us to learn from. There's something powerful about remembering how God has worked in the past. I remember when I was about 18, I created a document on my laptop where I'd write down things I was thankful for. And when I started, it was small things like, I'm thankful I got home safely, or thankful I finished my homework before the deadline. But over time, I'd include not just general things, but also ways God had answered specific prayer requests and testimonies of how he'd come through for me. And there have been times in my life where I've been going through difficult periods, where things are tough. And I've opened that document again, and I've read through what God has done for me in the past. And it strengthened my faith and reminded me that God is in control, even if I can't see it. Because God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can put our faith in him. And that's exactly what Hezekiah does. And he encourages the people to do the same. But then the king receives a letter. Turn with me to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 37, verses 14 to 20. Isaiah chapter 37, verses 14 to 20. The Assyrian Rabshakeh has sent a letter to Hezekiah, essentially saying, don't trust in your God. Look at all the other lands we've destroyed. Have their gods been able to, to save them? Why then do you think that you will be delivered? Isaiah 37 verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Then Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Truly, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, Save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord, you alone. Hezekiah doesn't look to another nation for help. 
He doesn't turn to Egypt like so many other kings before him. Instead, he goes to the temple, falls on his face and prays. The king knows that despite his effort to fortify Jerusalem, his only real protection is from God. And I love verse 20. O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord, you alone. Yes, Hezekiah has faith that God is able to save them, but notice even in the midst of this crisis, his focus isn't just for Jerusalem. He prays that their salvation will also be a witness to all the other kingdoms of the earth, that they may know that the Lord alone is God. And in faith, Hezekiah prays, and God hears, and God delivers. The Lord sends an angel in the night who destroys the mighty army, and Sennacherib returns, defeated, back to his own land. One thing we see about Hezekiah was that his faith wasn't dependent on circumstance. It's not that hard to trust God when things are going well, when we constantly see his miracles and answered prayers. But when that stops, when instead of answered prayers, there's silence, and we don't understand why God's allowing certain things to happen, will we still choose to trust God? The Assyrians had conquered kingdom after kingdom, city after city, and from a human point of view, Hezekiah's situation did not look good. But Hezekiah sees the unseen, and he knows God personally, and he wants other kingdoms to know him too. So now we reach the last major event in Hezekiah's life. Turn with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 to 5. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Return. And tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, surely I will heal you. Hezekiah's life up until this point has been successful. He's reformed the nation of Judah, he's reinstated the temple services, and he's witnessed the defeat of his enemies. But he suddenly becomes ill, and Isaiah tells him he's going to die. When the king hears the news, he does what he always does. He turns to God. At the lowest moment in his life, he cries out to him. And Isaiah hadn't even left the courtyard before the Lord instructs him to return and tell the king his prayer has been heard and he will be healed. And like Moses at the burning bush and Gideon before going into battle, Hezekiah asks for a sign and God in his mercy gives him a sign. He makes the shadow go backward 10 degrees on the sundial and the Lord saves Hezekiah's life. But let's continue. Verse 12. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 12 to 19. At that time, Berodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah. For he heard that Hezekiah had been sick, and Hezekiah was attentive to them, and showed them all the house of his treasures, the silver and gold, the spices and precious ointment, and all his armory, all that was found among his treasures. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say, and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, They came from a far country, from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. And Isaiah said to Hezekiah, 
Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord which you have spoken is good. For he said, Will there not be peace and truth, at least in my days? The king of Babylon hears that Hezekiah had been sick and sends messengers with letters and gifts to Jerusalem. How easy it would have been for Hezekiah to tell them about God, to share his testimony of how his own life had been spared when it looked like there was no hope. What seeds of truth might have been planted in the hearts of these Babylonians. But instead, Hezekiah shows them his silver and gold, his spices and ointments and armor, all his treasures. It's as if there's this contrast between the Hezekiah that came to the throne, the one who was on fire for God, restoring worship in the temple, even inviting people from the northern kingdom to come to the Passover. The Hezekiah that, in the time of crisis, not only had faith that God would save the nation, but also wanted that salvation to be a witness to all the other nations too. To this Hezekiah, the one who has a clear opportunity to declare the goodness and power of the living God to messengers of a pagan king but misses it. Instead, he shows them all his earthly treasure. And it's sad because Hezekiah was showing them things they already had. The Babylonians already had silver and gold, spices and ointment and armor. What they didn't have was the knowledge of the true God. Gold and silver will pass away, but the knowledge of God is a treasure that will last throughout eternity. And it makes me wonder, how did Hezekiah get to this point? How did he come from being so on fire for God to missing the opportunity to share his faith when it was right there in front of him? It seems to me that Hezekiah lost his focus. His concern for other people's salvation started to wane, and instead he allowed pride and vanity to fill his heart. His focus turned from heaven and he became absorbed with the fleeting treasures of this life. And it's tempting to quickly point a finger at Hezekiah, but perhaps we should ask ourselves the question, what about me? What's my priority in life? What am I focusing on? Paul tells us in Colossians 3 verse 2 to set our mind on things above, not on things on the earth. It's so easy at times to get absorbed in the here and now, and the enemy is constantly trying to take our minds off God and the work we've been commissioned as Christians to do. Because when we're so engrossed in ourselves and our own lives, we lose opportunities all around us to share Christ with other people. The opportunities are there, but we miss them. Perhaps, like Hezekiah, some of us have lost our zeal. We've lost our first love, and we forget that there are thousands of people in our world who are dying, not knowing there's a God in heaven who wants to heal them and give them life for eternity. We might think that because we live in a secular society, no one's interested in hearing about God. But that's not what scripture says. Scripture says the harvest is plentiful. It's the workers who are few. Many people are yearning for what we have. The joy and the peace and the love that comes from a relationship with our saviour. So let me ask you a question this morning. Who needs to hear your testimony? Who does God want you to share his love with this week? God gives us opportunities as individuals and as a church, but how we choose to use them is up to us. 
There's a song which came to my mind as I was thinking about this sermon. It's called, My House is Full. And in closing, I just want to read the lyrics to you. There is peace and contentment in my father's house today. Lots of food on his table and no one is turned away. There is singing and laughter as the hours pass by, but a hush calms the singing as the father sadly cries. My house is full, but my field is empty. Who will go and work for me today? It seems my children all want to stay around my table, but no one wants to work in my fields. No one wants to work in my fields. Push away from the table, look out through the window pane. Just beyond the house of plenty lies a field of golden grain, and it's ripe unto harvest. But the reapers, where are they? They're in the house. Oh, can't the children hear the father sadly say, my house is full, but my field is empty. Who will go and work for me today? It seems my children all want to stay around the table, but no one wants to work in my fields. No one wants to work in my fields. Will you go and work in my field? As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if there's anyone here today who feels like they've been struggling to keep their focus on heaven, that other things of this life have been taking priority and you want God to help you refocus, perhaps you've lost the zeal and passion you once had to share Jesus with others and you want God to restore that faith again, if that's you, then just raise your hand where you are. Just raise your hand and we'll pray together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the privilege we have to pray to you, knowing that you are a God who hears and answers when we call. Lord, we ask that you will forgive us for the times we've prioritized other things over you. Forgive us for getting complacent and for the opportunities that we've missed to tell people about your love. Help us to surrender to you each day and to seek your kingdom first. Please use each one of us in powerful ways. And we pray that when you return, we'll hear you saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jody. I um, hope we've all been blessed hearing that word from the Lord. I'd like to request us all to rise up as we sing our closing hymn, number 359. And I'd like to request uh, Tim. Yeah, thank you. Who will go and work today? Fields are wide, the harvest waiting. Who will bear the sheep's away? Loud and long, the master calleth, which reward he offers free. Who will answer gladly, saying, Here am I. If you cannot cross the ocean and the heathen lands explore, you can find the heathen nearer, you can help them at your door. If you cannot speak like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, 
You can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot be the watchman standing high on Zion's wall, pointing out the path to heaven, offering life and peace to all, with your prayers and with your bounties, you can do what hand demands. You can be like faithful Aaron, holding up the prophet's hands. While the souls of men are dying and the master calls for you, let none hear you hide saying, There is nothing I can do. Gladly take the task he gives you. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth. Here I am, O Lord, send me. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you because you are a God who gave up everything so that we could be saved. And we pray now, Lord, that you will put a burden on our hearts to share your salvation with others. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit and guide us day by day. We pray that you'll be with all the outreach events happening this afternoon and Please work on people's hearts that they may be open and receptive and that seeds may be planted in the hearts that will grow and transform their lives. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, we've come to the end of our um, worship this morning. I uh, just like to inform each and every one of us that there's lunch sufficient for everyone, so please don't go home hungry. Um, just go upstairs, there's lunch, and then after that we can follow the afternoon program as already um, brought to us by Sister Bui. Um, parents with children who are going for the campery in May, please stay behind as um, earlier requested. Thank you. May God bless you all. Thank you.